Well, good morning. This is Pastor Keith Hodges. I want to welcome you today to Everyday Sunday. Today is Wednesday, and I want to give you a special invitation to join us tonight at our Holly Pond campus at 6.30 for a special night of prayer and worship. And we're going to pray for our nation, and we're going to stand in the gap for those seven mountains of influence that we've been talking about on Sundays. And we're going to press in and see God give us these mountains. We're going to reclaim our nation for the glory of God. And we're going to see a supernatural shift as God moves on every mountain of influence and brings our nation back to a place of submission and honor to Him. Well, today I want to talk to you about a message simply entitled Mind Set. Mind Set. And I want to read Romans chapter 8. Verse 5 and 6, very familiar scripture if you're, if you're familiar with the New Testament, especially the book of Romans. The Bible says this, For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And look what he says in verse 6, For the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Let me share a couple of thoughts with you today. What if I told you that the difference, the difference between life and death, the difference between victory and defeat, the difference between restoration and devastation, the difference between healing and sickness, and the difference between blessing and curses is your mindset. What if it is your mindset? How you have your mind set determines the difference between all of those things. I want to ask you a question today. Do you have a victory mindset? Do you have a restoration mindset? Do you have a healing mindset? Do you have a blessing mindset? Or is your mind set on defeat? Is your mind set on devastation? Is your mind set on the curses and the consequences and the challenges of life? Because it is your mindset that determines the difference between life and death, between blessing and cursing, and between victory and defeat. So let me give you just a couple thoughts about this. So a mindset, according to Scripture, a mind governed or set by the Spirit, governed by the Spirit, is life and peace. So a mindset on the Spirit, hear me, doesn't mean that all you think about is God. To have a mind that is set on the Spirit, that does not mean that all you do is think about God. Read your Bible and pray and think about God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let me just be really bold here and say, if all you thought about was God, you would be a horrible Christian. Why? Because Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. When you look at the life and ministry of Jesus, Jesus didn't just think about the Father. He thought about the people that he came to redeem and that he came to rescue. Jesus saw the, other, saw the people that other people didn't see. He touched the people that other people wouldn't touch. Why? Because he had a mind set on the Spirit. So what does it mean to have a mind set on the Spirit? It doesn't mean that all I think about is God. It literally means, hear me, it literally means that I actually think like God. What would happen in your life if you began to think like God in every area of your life? So let me ask you a couple questions this morning. What does God think about your life? What does God think about your circumstances? What does God think about your financial situation, your relational situation, your family, your children, your job? What does God think about your physical problems and difficulties? What does God think about your life? Now, let me tell you how you know what God thinks. This is really cool. So the way that we know what God thinks about our lives, number one, is we look at Jesus. If you want to know what God thinks about your life, if you want to know God's will, God's plan, and God's purpose for your life, literally, Everything and anything about your life can be discovered by looking first at Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the visible expression of the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, I've never said anything and I've never done anything that I haven't heard the Father say or I haven't seen the Father do. Jesus was a perfect expression of the Father. And so Jesus revealed to us God's will, God's plan, God's thoughts. If you don't know what God is thinking, listen to what Jesus said. If you know what God is doing, look at what Jesus did because Jesus revealed to us 
the Father himself. So we could know God by looking at Jesus. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says that part of the goal of Christianity is that one day we would be transformed to the image and likeness of Christ. And that when we see him, the Bible says, one day we're going to be like him. Why? Because the goal is that we would become more and more like Jesus. So if you want to know what God thinks about your life, about every circumstance and every situation in your life, look at Jesus Christ. He is the perfect expression of the heart of God, the thoughts of God, the mind of God and the will of God for your life. The second thing you have to do is not just look at Jesus, but listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Listen to what he has already said through scripture, and then listen to what he is currently saying as he speaks specifically into your life. Now, let me close with this. I want to give you two last thoughts here, and I want you to think about this. Do you really believe, do you really believe that God is worried? Do you really believe that God is stressed out, freaking out, depressed, discouraged, or that God is in heaven right now overwhelmed? So let me just say this. If God is not depressed, discouraged, and overwhelmed, then you shouldn't be. If God is not depressed, discouraged, and overwhelmed, you should not be. Let me say it again. In spite of everything that is happening, listen to this. In spite of everything that is happening in our world right now, do you honestly believe that God is in heaven asking the angels to get him Prozac and Rolaids so he can make it through one more day? I want to tell you something. I can't believe that. I don't believe that. God is large and in charge. And if God is not freaking out, stressed out, and overwhelmed by what's happening in our world, you should not be. Why? Because if you think like God thinks, You'll see what God sees. You'll hear what God hears. And then ultimately, here's the good news. You can do what God does and you can have peace. He who sets his mind on the spirit, the Bible says, has life and peace. So God bless you today as you begin to think like God thinks and set your mind on the things of the spirit.